State your names and occupations for the court. I kind of always wish they didn't rush off the defendants so quickly. What? Like... <laughs> what did that lip just do? What that yeah, lip did? Yeah, I was going to say that. Though? No, that was weird. What that lip did? Uh... <laughs> Uh, really quick, because we did also get several pieces of evidence in that. I do want to take a look at yeah. them. Uh, it's 45, time of death. Oh, oh. Uh, 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 coroner. Maria, Maria Gory. Oh, that's what's-her-fuck's daughter. I don't know if we're supposed to know that, but I know enough people have called her daughter Maria. Is that... That wasn't, no, because her names are Courtney Scythe and Courtney Stevens. Yes. So this is a completely different last name. Yep, uh, which is weird. Bias Vegas and Mail. Cause of death, British. shot in the chest, close range, resulting in instant death, scorch marks at point of entry, the bullet exited the body from behind. The caliber of the gun used matches that of standard issued firearms from members of the judiciary. Okay. You know, those guns we give prosecutors for some reason. Yeah, absolutely wild. Uh, and then this is just... Yeah, okay, the layout, which we know. Uh, can we actually... I can't wait till we have to use... We already did this. Are we gonna say, oh yeah, use this for a bunch of things. Wig. I mean, the, now it's all still like that we have the red wig. Yeah. <laughs> that we found. Uh, Alright, I'm also curious what he was investigating Gregson on. He's genuinely like, what, what was going on with that, huh? You were investigating the inspector? What on earth for? I'm not at liberty to say. This is a bad time to keep secrets. Sorry! I'd identified a distinct possibility that Gregson was involved in a case I was investigating. Regrettably, though, he was killed before I could secure the proof I needed. Is the court to understand, then, that on the day in question, you followed the victim to the scene? Of course. How else was I going to kill him? Damn, Damn it. Ask <laughs> me again, judge. <laughs> no. I was privy to his movements in advance. How? Oh. I stole into his office in the yard and consulted his diary. Okay. The address on Fresno Street was noted in the 5 p.m. entry. You illegally entered the man's office. In Japan, that alone would constitute a very serious offense. As it does in Great Britain, I assure you, is that not the case, Lord Van Zeeks? I was aware of the possible consequences. So, in summary, you were investigating the victim, and yet you refused to tell the court why. I didn't realize British prosecutors enjoyed such freedom to choose what to divulge under oath. Uh, why did I ever think I could defend this man? <laughs> uh, it was dark and I saw no one. Tell us about that. Had you ever been to this address before? No, never. I only learnt of the place as a result of my investigations into Gregson's activities. There was no light inside when I entered, so it was all but impossible to make out anything. But at 5pm, the sun would have got just gone down. It would still have been reasonably light outside. The room has a window, but it was boarded shut. Very little light found its way into the room from outside, so it was extremely murky inside. I wouldn't have noticed that the victim was already lying on the floor. There was no, artif there was no artificial light in the room, you say? You're quite sure? 
I'm quite sure that the part of the room where the body was found was very dark. I have a feeling there was a small oil lamp burning on the desk, though I couldn't say for certain. Look, Mr. Naruto. Yeah, there is a lamp there. Okay. There is a small desk in the room just here. Yes, I remember. And there was an oil lamp on it, as well as the framed as the framed photograph. When I entered the room, I closed the door behind me and started towards the desk to investigate. And what did you find? Nothing. I never actually reached the desk. Gunshot and saw the revolver at the floor. Did you happen to see anybody else? <laughs> or anything? So, who fired the gun? Okay. I have no idea. Thank you. I didn't see anybody else in the room. The defense rests, Your Honor. <laughs> but you st but you say it was very dark in there. Yes, that's right. All I can tell you is I didn't sense another's presence. Aha! Then it could be that the gunshot actually originated from somewhere outside the room. No, no we just Ryan. Didn't talk about how it had to be really, really close. Ryan. No, that's out of the question. Oh. <laughs> Without doubt, the sound emanated from inside the room. I could smell the gunpowder. <sighs> this is going from bad to worse. And you say that's the point at which you notice the revolver on the floor. Correct. And I foolishly picked it up. That was carelessness on my part. At least you admit it. Presumably, then, the gunshot you heard came from the firearm that you somewhat hastily took in your hands. In point of fact, my lord, I believe it did not. What? The barrel of the revolver I picked up was cold and there was no smell of spent powder. Mm. <laughs> but, but then, where on earth is the gun that was fired? Whilst I would like to oblige you with an answer, I'm afraid I can't. I, too, would dearly like to know that. Uh... Door flew open and I heard a man scream. Hold it! A man, you say? One of the witnesses, I presume. That's right. One of the street merchants working on Fresno Street. Who are these merchants? A number of them had set up their stalls directly beneath the boarded window of the crime scene. A match seller a newsmonger, and a peddler. They've all given statements saying they heard the gunshot. And without thought of danger, they ran inside to see what had happened. Yes, Gina told us about that yesterday, didn't she? They burst through the door with some force, it would seem. They did, and almost gave me a heart attack in the process. But you're supposed to be the Reaper! The first man to come in immediately noticed the revolver in my hand and fled. A policeman patrolling on Fresno Street heard the commotion and was able to arrest the accused shortly after the incident occurred. Anyway, the man's scream drew my attention in that direction. So I turned and fired. <laughs> Two down. 
Uh, it was only then, then more witnesses just kept pouring in. <laughs> I almost ran out of ammo. <laughs> um, what do you mean by that? In what way did the body appear? I honestly can't explain it, but it's the truth. As far as I was concerned, the body hadn't been there until that point. And then suddenly, there it was. Did you perhaps hear the sound of the victim falling to the ground just beforehand? At that moment, what I heard was the sound of the door flying open and the scream of the man who came inside first. Nothing more. I see. After the man fled, I examined the body. I was stunned to find that it was Gregson. Oh, most curious circumstances indeed. How the inspector was killed or how his body seemed to appear out of nowhere. I have no idea. Objection. Oh, shit. Surely the court has heard enough. <gasps> My lord, the cross-examination has clearly revealed that the accused, Barak Van Zeeks, is lying on multiple fronts. What is that supposed to mean? Good gracious, counsel. The defendant is lying, you say? Yeah, why was that not... In his testimony just now, he claims that he failed to notice the victim's body because the room was dark. That's correct. No, that's impossible. As proven as vampire, by this candelabrum. Yeah. As a vampire, he should have night vision. It wouldn't matter that the room was dark. I, I'm a little shocked that we didn't have to present this evidence because I pointed this out when we were coming first hearing his <laughs> cross examination, and I was just trying to press all the things first. But very interesting. How does that prove anything? If you examine the tip of the long candle, you can see it has been blown off by a powerful impact. One would assume that the projectile from the firearm passed through the victim and struck the candle. The problem comes when you consider the other two candles, which are clearly of a different length. Yes, I can see that only the candle that appears to have been struck by the bullet is long. We could reasonably expect someone to have lit all three candles together. Which begs the question of why, why only one has ended up longer than the others. That must be because that particular candle was extinguished when the others were still burning. <sighs> you dumb That's idiot. right. When the candle was hit by the bullet, it obviously went out. But the other two candles would still have been burning. So the fact is... The victim's body would have been illuminated by the light still thrown by the candelabrum. And the accused's claim that he couldn't see the body clearly contradicts those facts. Uh, and now to the next lie. There's more? The accused also claims never to have visited the scene of the crime before. That's the truth. In that almost empty room, the police discovered something very unusual. A board covered from top to bottom in police documents and newspaper cuttings. Yes, that's right. We saw it too. 
It goes without saying that the contents of the police documents cannot be divulged. However, they included a number of reports from various historical cases. The oldest of which was from 10 years ago. 10 years ago? This is starting to sound familiar. <laughs> and there is a common thread linking all of the documents on that board. Indeed. Oh, what is this common thread, Council? They all relate to cases prosecuted in court by Barak Van Zeeks. All of them? And furthermore, all those cases are ones in which the defendant was acquitted. And then died. Good Lord! Interestingly, none of those defendants <sighs> are alive today. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because all of them have been sent to their graves by the Reaper. Uh. Oh no! In short, that dingy little room is the Reaper's secret hideout and his base of operations. The, the Reaper's hideout? I'd say that's a little bit of a stretch. Uh -huh. And yet the Reaper would claim never have to it would and the Reap, and yet the Reaper would claim never to have been to his own secret hideout. No one would believe that. No, the truth is, we've been looking at this backwards. Um, backwards? Uh, explain, Council. Inspector Gregson was investigating the identity of the Reaper. When he discovered the location of the man's secret hideout, he was killed. As I'm sure everyone can imagine, by the Reaper's hand. What? Order! 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 Uh, very well. I hereby state the current opinion of the court. Case over. You lost. Eric Van Zeeks is an, is an outstanding prosecutor who has rendered great service to his country. However, it is with deep regret that I must concur with Prosecutor Rasogi's contention. That the defendant's testimony exhibits a number of stark inconsistencies with the known facts. All I have done is state the truth as I know it. Possum has done a brilliant job as ever. He's drawing on his experience as a defense attorney to build his prosecution case. And it's formidable. Counsel? You will submit the board that you just showed the court as evidence. I believe it to be fundamental in establishing the facts surrounding the Reaper's existence. Thank you, my lord. Okay, well, we're definitely going to take a look at this. <laughs> I reckon Another that's a good move. And now, the prosecution would like to call new witnesses to the stand. Witnesses who saw events unfold on the day in question. They were mentioned in the previous testimony too, if you remember. Yes. The street sellers who heard the gunshot and went running into the room. Very well. Lead the witnesses in. The defendant may step down from the witness stand. I know they got arrested, but I'm like so concerned it's going to be those two redheaded people that were in Sholmes's apartment earlier in the case. God, I won't even be surprised. Certainly, my lord. Whoa! Beppo! Beppo! Beppo's the fucking sign guy from Tears of the Kingdom. Will you help so, the commissioner no. stand? Or whatever the fuck it is? I think construction code. So, witnesses, state your names and occupations for the court. I kind 
always wish they didn't rush off the defendants what? so quickly. What? Like, <laughs> what did that lip just do? What that yeah, lip do? Yeah, I was gonna say that. Though? No, that was weird. What that lip do? That. <laughs> names? We don't use names. Far too fancy for the likes of us. You, you don't have a name? Little Red Riding Hood, straight up. Yeah. We're just free and easy, sell what we like, live where we want to live. I give them all a vacant stare as they walk down Fresno and spin a few words into a verse for them. What's that sign? I think it says a hundred whatever uh, quid or whatever. Would I be right in assuming that all three of you make your living by selling wares on the street? <laughs> Everyone calls me gossip. I sell jaunty little cheap bits to passers by, you know. Bro, what's up with your neck? Oh, are you are you getting choked, my guy? Are you okay? Unless you're into that, then like that's fine. But like, no king shaming. No king shaming. But like, are you okay? Are you okay? Jaunty little tidbits. Tidbits. Got an absolute smasher for you, sir. Right up your ginnel it is. Okay, I don't think we're into the same things. Six puts is the price, and not a penny less. Uh, wait, you're, you're actually trying to sell it to me now? Oh, come on, sir. Don't tell me you're not interested. I don't like this guy's lip. <laughs> Makes me Try the man. Oh, calls him not in front of you. Give him the money and see what it is. See Salto? <laughs> Pay the man, counsel. <laughs> no! <laughs> alright, alright, sixpence it is. You won't regret it, sir. Now, got your listening ears on? Just between us, a young couple on Slight Street. I just had twins. It feels like, because uh, I just finished watching the Demon Slayer season, it feels like, are you ready for a Taisho era secret? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, is, is that it? God. No, that's not it. It's gossip, isn't it? It wants to spread. But that bit's up to you in your mouth, of course. Don't talk about my mouth and what it gets into, please. I've got more, you know. What, another juicy one? Six pence a piece it is, if you're curious. I am curious, yes. About what's just going on under that fat bottom lip of yours. Namely... Unusual bruise or whatever that is poking out from under your collar. What about the next witness then? What name do you go by and what do you sell? Me? I'm Venus. That's what everyone calls me. Funny, isn't it? Okay, I like you already, Venus. Whoa! Oh. I sell these lovely little fireworks to all the local school kids. Oh! <gasps> Sixpence a pop. What'd you say? Ten out One of ten. Like... One don't like those in here. <laughs> you weren't exaggerating with little. Do they actually sell? Oh yeah. The second years can't get enough of my Venus firecrackers. Especially when I tell them that if they get a hundred, they could blow up the school. Don't no. Uh, oh. Venus? I don't like that anymore. Venus? You're going to I don't, jail. I don't, I don't. I don't like this anymore. Venus, you're going to jail. Not the most savory of ideas, young lady. What do you say then, eh? When a part with a sixpence for a pop? I swear to God, they tell me to. Wait, what? What? You you want me to buy one? They're gonna do this, aren't they? 
Tell you what, I'll let you in on a little secret. If you get a hundred of them, you can blow up the whole courtroom. No, 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 that's a different game. <laughs> I would like 100 of them. <laughs> Try the woman. <laughs> Give her the money and see if she's right. I hate it. Pay the woman, counsel. <laughs> I am. All right, all right, I'll buy one. Lovely stuff. Right then, this is something a bit extra just for you. Whoa! The Venus Special. Only 600 pence. 600? It's a hundred of my regular fireworks. Nothing little about that, is there? It doesn't look like it could blow up a school or a courtroom, though. <laughs> and there'd be nothing little about the punishment if I blew up the old Bailey, either. Alright, alright. Oh, okay. Now we have firecrackers. Oh, it couldn't. What sort of bang could it make? Oh, that's the bet. That's the gunshot oh. he thought he heard. Oh, hundred percent video game. Oh. All right, now what? Now and what are we? Last... What are we gonna have to spend six pence to get Beppo to do? And the last witness. What name do you go by, and what do you sell? I'm the th th thinker, me. Oh, he's a killer. Think. All sorts of thoughts. I think, therefore I am. I am, therefore I think. I think. Because I stand here there on the street, w watching the world go on about me, they call me the Observator. Okay, this is just incredibly sad. I feel so terrible for Beppo. <laughs> Get out of it, old man. Everyone calls you Sandwich, and you know it. He's called Sandwich now? <laughs> so, you don't actually sell anything? <laughs> Not even sandwiches? A problem shared is a problem halved, as they say. I give advice, I do, and I think what it means. I don't actually sell anything, no. Come to think of it. Let's say hat, hot actual hero. It did. Pity. What? That sounds like it's a tagline to something. Yeah. But like something in a parody. Yeah. No more purchases today, please. Oh, okay, shit. Well, we have quite a cast here, it seems. They conduct their business on Fresno Street from morning until night, my lord. <laughs> Voucher 15 bits saying, fun gag fact. Uh, the third witness is often mistaken for the witness from 1-3, the coachman Beppo, but is in reality a completely new character, Sandwich. <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. If this was Beppo, I would have been confused, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> and always in the same place directly adjacent to the crime scene. Wait, Galactic Whale Shark says he actually has a separate wiki page from Beppo that says he may or may not be Beppo. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I see. And thus they heard the gunshot, I suppose? Not only that, but they very bravely ran inside to see what was going on and witnessed the crime. Well, I'll be beggared, I thought. Just between us. Venus de Milo, what am I to do? What a terrible thing I saw. What I think is, if all what we see is a light and a shadow playing with our eyes, is any of it real? Okay, sandwich. Okay, Jaden. Okay, Jaden Smith. Sandwich, you're thinking a little. <laughs> yeah, it should have said, "How can our eyes be real if mirrors aren't real?" <laughs> Very well. I've decided you are all idiots. The court will now hear the formal testimony of these three witnesses now. 
You will describe in detail what you witnessed and heard at the time of the incident. Hmm. We saw the whole thing from start to finish, we did. Everything from the moment they went into the building. It was less than a minute after the Reaper had gone inside that we heard a big bang. Seems to me that quick to talk is quick to walk. Gossip couldn't wait to go in and see what had happened. I ran into the room and there he was. The Reaper, gun in hand, standing over the dead body. I was scared after death me, so I ran off to find a copper. Hmm. If these witnesses were there the whole day and saw everything, who did they see going inside the building? Only the victim, Inspector Gregson, and the accused, Barak Van Zeeks. I've seen pictures of that Reaper in the paper. I know what he looks like. And just between us, folks love stories like this. I've made myself a tidy sum already. But wait! The room was just one of several flats in the building. Someone from some other flat could have done it. All those flats on Fresno Street are unoccupied. Of course they are. Those small, damp, dirty, and expensive to boot. The room, in, the room in which the inspector was found is the only property in the building that's currently leased. And we know the leaseholder's name, don't we? It's Hugh Boone. Hmm. The testimony the court has just heard would appear to leave little room for doubt. It's becoming increasingly difficult to see how anyone other than the defendant could have committed the crime. No! Thank you for your candor, my lord. Counsel for the defense, you may proceed to cross-examine the witnesses. Yes, my lord. A closed court like this, without a jury, Judge is the only person whose opinion matters. I have to break down this testimony. Somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, saw the whole thing from start to finish. Everything for the moment where they went into the building. I'm curious about this. When you say they, who do you mean exactly? Inspector Gregson and the defendant, Lord Van Zeeks. I well, suppose so. The likes of us don't know the names of the high and mighty. But I'll tell you one thing. It was the old Reaper that went in last. That's for sure and certain. Just behind Inspector Gregson. Did they arrive at the same time as each other? No, no, not at all. The first fella must have gone inside a good 15 minutes before we heard that gunshot. This isn't important. I have a theory about gossip, but I'll, we can talk about that later. I can't focus on what he says, I just hate that lip animation. <laughs> the victim arrived 15 minutes before? Are you sure about that? Am I sure? Am I sure? Does it seem likely that I've forgotten a fellow with bright red hair like that, does it? Yeah, is it really worried, weren't it? Redder than my flaming fireworks, even. Red, redder than your riding hood? That, that fiery red mop still burnt on the inside of my eyelids, it is. What? Wait a minute! You're saying that the man was a redhead? Weren't you listening, chum? Oh, he was a redhead. And he had a big trunk with him as well. 
Okay, let's not talk about his butt. But Inspector Gregson's hair isn't what? red. Not by any stretch of the imagination. But what was he going to do with all that junk? <laughs> all oh. that junk inside his trunk? I think he was going to get, 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 get you drunk. Get you love oh. drunk off his humps. Oh, okay. Check it out. It seems likely that the person you saw wasn't, in fact, Inspector Gregson at all, but some other third party. Ryan, he's gonna. Oh, Gregson was, about was to wearing dunk the wig. You. you literally have the wig. Mm -hmm. No, I hate to break it to you, but the witnesses are correct. What? Just have a look at this photograph of the witness of the victim taken at the scene. Sorry, Cosmo, you did say the line. Oh, just have a look at this photograph of the victim taken at the scene. Thank you. Y yes, that's... That's Inspector Gregson, all right. And a red hairpiece. <sighs> of course, we saw one on the floor when we investigated the scene, didn't we? I still refuse to believe that Inspector Gregson wore a hairpiece, though. So then why on earth would he have been wearing something like that? Hmm. Uh, the colour does seem to suit the man, one might say. Uh, the photograph will be submitted as evidence, please, Counsel. What became of the trunk that the red-headed victim was supposedly carrying? I was informed that no trunk was found at the scene. So it just disappeared? What? Do you expect us to have been watching the building every second, do you? Wait, that's really important. Yeah, so you're saying that somebody else could have gotten in there then? Yeah, you're saying because if you didn't find the trunk there... Uh huh. Uh huh. And they did. That means someone else need to take the trunk out that uh -huh. wasn't Van Seeks, which means yeah, that's really important. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We definitely saw him in the dock going in, though. No question about that. Uh, all right. Let me. People are saying to press that button. Also, uh, just to go back to it, my theory about this guy. He looks very different, but the hair is pretty spot on for our missing husband. I I I thought about that when you I thought I literally thought just before you said what you thought the theory was, uh -huh. and I mean, yeah, it's pretty the specific. Hair, uh, go back. I'll look at the eyebrows. And the eyebrows kind of, I mean, we can't eyebrows, to the side, but. Yeah, but face shape, hair, and eyebrows are all a dead match. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Very, very good call, Zach. Yeah, yeah. But that's just some gossip. Don't take it from me. That's just a sandwich. Don't take it from me. <laughs> uh, press it. Right. So, when gossip ran to see what had happened, did you go too? Well, me, I'm a b bit hampered to see. All the signs are that, all the signs are that, that I can't move very well. <sighs> you are away behind, presumably, with that sandwich board around your neck and that big sign in your hand. What a great burden you bear, sandwich. We all have our cross to bear sandwich. It is kind of, it is interesting that you kind of tell that they definitely want us to be a different character. Uh -huh. Because outside of the cold thing, it is nothing it's just, like Beppo. It's just, yeah. It, it, it's, it looks like Beppo, it's cold like Beppo, but everything else about his personality is like, uh -huh. definitely supposed to be a different character. Uh-huh. Pardon me for asking, Mr. Um, Sandwich, but is it possible you and I have met before? 
Uh, I'm not anybody me. The signs are what make me who I am now. I sign, therefore I am. I love that he's just Damn. slowly spinning the sign around too. It's very Damn. good. So you weren't employed as an om as an omnibus driver just under a year ago then. <laughs> I might be mistaken, but I believe his trembling has intensified, <laughs> Mr. Naruto. Yes, I agree. <laughs> He's clearly been through a lot. Third down King Henry Street and the Black Widower's arms is just there. Oh dear, you've made him hide behind his sign. <sighs> Life is full of surprises. Curious about what you saw the moment you came into the room. Hold it! So then, you were the first person to arrive on the scene. Is that right? That I was. Kicked the door open like a professional, I did, and yelled out, What's going off here? Lord Antiques claims all he heard was a man scream, though. And was it dark inside the room? No, not dark at all. There were candles burning on the wall. Really? And there was a fella collapsed on the floor. Just between us, it's the first thing I noticed when I got inside. <sighs> I... I see. Even though Lord Van Zix claims not to have seen any such lights on the wall. The next thing I noticed was someone standing right beside the body. The accused, Barak Van Zeeks. That's right, the pale-faced reaper himself. I was a little shocked, I won't deny it. But I'm no lily-livered coward. I stood my ground and gave that reaper a cold, hard stare myself. Okay, Sandwich, what do you have to say about this? I'm real curious. Excuse me. <laughs> Give us the deed, Sandwich. Do you have something to add, Mr. Sandwich? If that is your real name? <laughs> I like how we do. We had a dude named Edgar, Edgar Benedict, yeah. and now we have Sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was someone hungry creating this game? <laughs> Shoot Takumi hadn't eaten in weeks. <laughs> God, I'm so hungry. <laughs> There's really n nothing to me. Empty in the head I am. Did this Just dude get two like two slices with no middle? Did this dude get like clockwork orange tortured or something? Like I think he's Jesus. just really poor and sad, Pridge. <laughs> so I don't know what you c could want with me. I think that maybe you just remembered something. Having heard Mr. Gossip's last statement, I mean. What I think is, we're all nothings, really. Okay. We try to dress ourselves up as something else, but at the end of the day, we're all just street sellers. Damn. That's enough out of you, sandwich. Keep your trap shut now. Unless you want us to make you into a real sandwich. Why are you so mean to him, Gossip? <laughs> also, you're sad to eat him. <laughs> when he saw the Reaper, he f f fell clean over on his backside. <laughs> That's it? Oh, you rotten beggar! I told you to keep that a secret. He screamed, he did. Sc screamed and scrambled off on all fours. That's all I w wanted to say. Yeah, stand up for yourself, Bacco. Mr. Gossip, is this true? The floor is dead slippery. That's why. What? <laughs> this roof is kind of the... slippery. <laughs> Planting my hand in a filthy pool of blood, didn't I? Yuck. What? A, p 
pool of blood? But listen here. Even when I was sprawled on the floor, I still kept giving that Reaper a cold, hard stare. And don't you forget it. Let's just go back a little. Did you say you got blood on your hand? I did, I. Happens to the best of us at times, doesn't it? No. So I was scared, so I slipped over. We can keep it just between us, can't we? No, Mr. Gossip. I'm going to have to ask you to add that to your information. Uh, add that information to your formal testimony. Oh, if I must. The witness will amend his testimony to include the aforementioned details at once. Okay. Fuck, he wiped it off on the floor. Well, I'm sure... I mean, we didn't see that when we were there, so that's curious. We also didn't look at this evidence. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, you okay. didn't wipe it on the floor, you idiot. Oh, what's this? Mr. Narahoto, look! Oh, yes. It's a smudge of some kind. In fact, it looks just like a handprint. And the color. That's blood, isn't it? Oh dear, how disturbing. Okay. Uh, just because I do want to see these articles on the front, I do want to click yeah. here too. There are details of a whole raft of cases dating back years on here, aren't there? This paper from ten years ago is browning with age. Look. Out of interest, the most recent thing appears to be this newspaper cutting here. Oh, it's the same red-headed league ad advertisement that Mr. Sholmes had picked out. And do you remember, there was a red hair piece at the scene, too. Was Inspector Gregson an, ex ex an exponent of, of the red-headed league, then? I'm assuming that's it? Yeah, okay. Uh, firecrackers. Have you had an idea, Mr. Narahodo? You're staring at the end of the string of fireworks. Sorry. It's just that it's the Venus Special. I was wondering what 600 pence worth of fireworks would sound like. Shall we find out? Yes. What? But but she said it could blow up the courtroom. We're still here. All right. That was a fairly sizable bang. That's gonna be important. Uh, mm -hmm. My ears are still ringing, Mr. Narahoto. It sounds. Oh. It sounded almost exactly like. It does go off like a gunshot. Okay. Wow, they, they just laying that one on thick. They, they sure did. Uh, and yeah, there he is. Okay. Yeah, I saw somebody say earlier he actually does have a chin. This is the most chin we've ever seen for him. It is the most chin we've ever seen on him. He looks like a normal human being with this, in this image. <laughs> Strike me down and I'll become more chin than you can ever imagine. <laughs> Uh, alright, so, hey, I guess we're gonna present the th thing that has a bloody hand on the back. Let's go for it. Yeah, stop the music. So you wiped off the blood from the back of your hand on the- wiped off the blood from your hand on the floor of the room. Are you quite sure about that? Whoa. Well, what else do you expect me to have done, eh? Does it really matter? Objection. The police found no such handprint on the floor during their investigations. 
What exactly is the, is the defense asserting? If you listen, you'll find out, Prosecutor Asogi. Damn, get his fucking ass. So, it's, a very point, it's a very pointless thing to be calling the witness on. Yeah. Certainly, there was no bloody handprint found on the floor. On the floor? What are you trying to say? There's a handprint of, in blood that very clearly at the scene. On the back of this notice board. Uh, 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 <laughs> I like that animation. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. Indisputably, a handprint and the distinctive color of blood. Oh, you did right! That's my right hand! I'd know it anywhere! Okay. Confidence. Objection. The witness very definitely testified that he wiped his hand on the floor. Any handprints on the back of the board are irrelevant. No. No, they're not. If we found a bloody handprint somewhere, we should talk about that. <laughs> not if the board itself had fallen over onto the floor. Oh! Yeah, that's what that's I was going to say. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, and I have a suspicion the board was like blocking the light for Van Zeke's or like hiding Gregson's body. Hmm. There's something there. Yeah, I, mean, I, I feel like at some point we're going to have to put in uh -huh. where we're going to, have to like, go to the map and be like, where was the board? Exactly. In that case, it's quite possible for the witness's handprint to have ended up there. Just look at the floor plan of the room. Oh, maybe it's coming sooner than I thought. <laughs> it's right now. <laughs> you best start the believing in board stories. You're in one. The notice board was in the opposite corner of the room to the victim, and in an upright position. Even if it had somehow been toppled and was lying on the floor at the time. It would have been a considerable distance from the body. I fell over when I came across the body. So I was basically right next to the corpse. Not on the other side of the room. In other words, the defense's assertion is contradictory. Yes, it is. There's a very definite contradiction here, for which there must be a reason. I take it that you formulated a proper hypothesis, Counsel? Regarding this apparent discrepancy between the witness's account and the handprint found at the scene? I have, my lord. This discrepancy between the witness's account and the location of the handprint is explained by... I mean, it's got to be the board moving, right? I believe so. And it's probably on wheels. I can't remember if it was, but I bet it is. Yeah, I feel like this is the, that's the most relevant. The real contradiction here is the handprint itself, not where it was found. As the court can see, it's upside down. Good gracious, so it is. If the witness had put his hand against the board, the fingers should be pointing upwards. What, what does that tell us? No. It tells one simple fact. When this handprint was made, the board must have been lying on the floor as I previously suggested. Which means that after the incident, it must have been moved. What? Objection. You're claiming that somebody moved the notice board after the shooting? The t then tell the court who. I, I don't know that yet, but the point is... When you consider all the testimony we've heard so far, we can now be very clear on one point. And that would be... The position of the notice board at the time of the incident, my lord. So, counsel, I must ask you to clarify your assertion for the court. 
At the time of the incident, where do you maintain the not notice board was situated? Uh, I mean, it has to All be right, so near the body. Okay, so that th that door at the top is the only door. Correct. Yeah, right. Uh, it was it was barring the door. That's why he had to bust it in. So it was just oh. there. In front of the door. Oh, and it got pushed over when the door knocked, knocked down. it over. Ah. Yep. Good thinking. Good thinking. Take that. It was right here, my lord. Goodness. Oh, come on. I'm afraid I don't quite see your logic. I'm disappointed, Rienosuke. In Japan, we're taught to have patience and respect for our elders. So until his lordship sees your logic, you will know your place and not move from that spot. Ugh. I wasn't planning on leaving, so, so okay. How brilliant of Kasuma-sama. That almost sounded unreasonable at first, but he was just thinking of you. Susato, not the time. Unreasonable? Try unfathomable. Anyway, I think I have the answer now. I know my place. Or rather, I know the board's place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm guessing they want us to say, like, right here? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say move it so you're just where like, would have found the line, or like here. I, mean, I, go, I guess like yeah, I guess I go like there. Yeah. Take that. I think that's a di yeah. Okay, it's different. Okay, yes. This is the only possible location. We needed its location after it got knocked over, not where it was. Yeah. Which they didn't specify, so whatever. We're right. Immediately adjacent to the doorway. If the court would think back to the testimony given by the defendant earlier. He said that when he entered the room, it was dark, and he couldn't see the body. Boyek! I'm just going to let him sit in this animation for a second, because it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> if the notice board had been here, the body would have been completely hidden from view. And the light from the candles would have been blocked, making the room appear darker. Objection. But the accused also claims that the victim's body simply appeared before him. That's true. Or in his precise words. Just as I picked the firearm up to examine it, the door flew open and I heard a man scream. It was only then that the body of Inspector Gregson appeared before me. I don't know what calling it a scream. I don't know about calling it a scream, but he was talking about me and no mistake. Because it was me that kicked the door open. If you look again at the floor plan, consider that what would happen to, if the door to the room was thrown open with force. That, that can't. The door struck the notice board, knocking it over and making the victim's body visible. Good gracious! My client has told nothing but the truth. He has simply described what he saw. Ah. Order! Order! Counsel! Uh, has this not come to light before now? After the incident, somebody must have righted the board and moved it. Into the position where the police, myself, and my colleague saw it when, the, uh, saw it when investigating the room. Witness, what have you to say for yourself? What? Uh, me, my lord? You and your fellows were there at the scene before anybody else. It goes without saying that you must know something about the position of the notice board. The witnesses in the stand will testify again. 
You will each explain exactly what you did upon arriving at the scene of the crime. Hey, just stop looking over your glasses at me. I'll get the message. Here's the thing. We could go another 15 minutes, but I do feel like this is actually a pretty perfect stopping point. But folks, that's going to do it for another Ace Attorney with an actual layer. Again, if you like this, catch it live on twitch.tv slash save data team. Uh, have a good time hanging out in the chat, talking with folks, and uh, making jokes that we'll read as well. Uh, and if you can, support us on patreon.com slash save data team. Buy stuff on Javi. Head to nexus.gg. Get yourself some Capcom's games for your PC and help support the channel as well. But until next time, stick around for art because court is adjourned. Fancy chair this time. Seishiro Jigoku. Yo, the fucking Jigoku is so I really, good. I really like Seishiro Jigoku. It's so good, gnomes. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, really good. <laughs> Damn! Shout, fucking shout out to Sandwich. We also haven't given enough t attention to Little Red Riding Hood, who I do like. Uh, oh, I mean, Venus' design is incredible. Venus, I know it's Little Red Riding Hood, but I don't know. It's, it's, just, it's good. It's good. It's, there's a reason it's so. Mm -hmm. it, it, it always shows up in media. Mm -hmm. It's just a good character sure. design. Uh, society with, uh, I'd be surprised if somebody hasn't already done this, but the other art I wanted to do this week wasn't working out. I needed something to post. Besides, I'm still pretty happy with Eugene Krabs. No, this is so good. I forget, because I know Krabs at least wears a hat at some point. Does he put it on top of his eyes or, like, on the back of his head? Uh, on top of his eyes. He does? Okay, that's incredible. <laughs> I feel like knowing like Spongebob loud if that's exactly what they would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I was like, I was like, if this was, like, your choice, incredible. Like, it, it's so good. <laughs> Six, with I plan on doing some more for now, but here, have some chibis. Chibi! Yeah! Oh, I love the close-up on all the eyes, too. Yeah. And I like that Gosh. all the eyes are unique. That's very, very cool. I, I'm a sucker for, like, cool anime eyes. Uh... So this is this is really really dope. Tezumas, with might not be able to join the stream this week because I'm now in a different time zone working on my summer art program. But I hope we'll catch the vibe when classes are over. Congrats. Uh, one two here are the last scenario me two weekdays. Day six is formal. I wanted to draw them in their Capcom Cafe outfits. Yeah. No, the the Capcom Cafe shit is like so bonkers good, and and this looks this feels this feels like. This should be like a cutscene in Anastasia. <laughs> that's what that's what Phoenix's like big red sash is giving me, and I love this. <laughs> uh, and family to wrap up Naramitsu week. Of course, I had to draw the family ever. Yeah. Uh, no, this is super adorable, Tezumas. Very very cute. Even with the dog, whose name is is kind of dumb, but. This is a very good dog. A pinky with, I've been kind of busy this week and I don't have time to draw a lot, so I have these many memo doodles. <laughs> me, me when I frame a 16 year old. Me when I am, <laughs> me when I say I stabbed a woman and then get arrested for stabbing said woman. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> Uh, Dev Lock at you with, we're finally at the point where I can start showing all my spoilery art. Uh, we had this Cosmo sketch I did on a while because I wanted to draw something symbolic. The Asoki's family crest was supposed to be a snake, which I always thought was interesting, especially in terms of Cosmo himself. I didn't know that, and that is very interesting. It is. Ha ha ha. I like it like a good snake staff. And three or four some re reverse AU Rinosuke designs where if he prosecuted instead of Kazuma, I specifically based it off one of uh, Barrick's older concepts art with an idea that he lent them and refitted them to his apprentice. Yeah. It's like a good, like a good, good strong posture Rinosuke, you know? Oh, <laughs> this, this second one is so good. I'm just the, the strong finger. Uh, it's big fuck you energy, and I love it. <laughs> uh, Zero, with here's my art of Barrack Van Zeeks if he was a Honkai Star Rail character. Gives off quantum nihility vibes, but yes. Yeah. I'd listen, he would be a five star. I don't know anything about Honkai Star Rail, but. <laughs> I mean, all the best ones are. Yeah, it's very, very cool. Uh, Val, with Vigil's lore time, perhaps? 
Daily and Evie first met by chance at some party or other, such like a distant, seems like a distant memory now, but they both got along very quickly. I can't say it was love at first sight, but it took a few dates for them to realize how fond they were of each other. They are at a bookstore. Evie likes reading. Daily tries his best. Also, yes, Daily's hair is a bit messier before he got married. I wonder why that is. Listen, she fixed him. She made him, she made him uh, care about his appearance more. She made him want to be better. And isn't that what a great partner is supposed to do? Inspire all of us to do? Uh, the Gachis with back on my furry bullshit. You know when you have two cats in the same house, but they're always beefing with each other? Yeah, that's these two. <laughs> I love, I love little Cosmo. <sighs> Gnarl. Also, I love just how fucking thick Van Zeke's oh, cat is. Oh, he's a He's a He chonster. is an absolute unit. You can't knock this cat over with a bucket of water. Like, god damn. <laughs> Uh, also, I have some more creatures with the Unicorn Strongheart, Lion Jigoku, a Mouse Couple, Pat, Pat and Rolly, Clint, Kit, Nyanzeeks, at the Professor, and Pre Trauma Nyanzeeks Brothers. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. yeah these Clint, are... Clint would be Clint would be some super exotic short hair. Uh huh, uh huh. Oh, these are all really, really good. Also, like the Lion Jigoku with like the mane, like kind of tucked up like that, is is a really clever choice. Uh, Infamously Dorky with some cosplay! Yeah! Yeah! Damn, nice! Dorky, I gotta ask, as, as someone who spent so much time drawing Bear, Manfred Von Karma, how did it feel to wear the clothes? You know, was that like a transformative experience? His name is Taser Man now, exactly, yeah. No, this, this cosplay's awesome though, hell yeah. I'm a sky with three handmade items based on stages of Phoenix life. A Feeny, a scarf knitted that is eight foot long. Damn, that's impressive. Lawyer, a Magatama made of air dry clay. And Beenix, a blue beanie with Papa sewn in a classic pin. Yeah! Very, very good. <laughs> Heck yeah, that's very dope, Emma. Uh, match a float with just some Beric Van Zeeks, just some Van Zeeks bros because they deserve so much better. <laughs> oh, very cute. You got a little little wooden sword for him. <laughs> Yen with a cute little comic. The Narahodos have a problem. <clears throat> Hello, Lord Van Zeeks. I don't like you. Get out of my office. You're the worst. Get out of my life. Sorry. <laughs> We came as soon as we heard. Fancy meeting you here. The last place I want to be and the last person I want to see. We could just leave you here. Susato, no! He's just a grumpy guy. It's part of his charm. You don't understand him. He's crying for help. Seriously, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. In <laughs> this little bit. He called me a bimbo. He's never done anything wrong. You just don't get it, Mia. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth <laughs> is the actual worst. <laughs> uh, Reaper Bob with Pretty Dead Woman. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is really cool. I like the halo look and like the glow on the eyes. It's very, very cool. <laughs> Shirley, with hi hi, I hope you all are doing great. Do you guys remember when Susato kept saying that soap reminded her of the Japanese flag? This is kind of similar. I believe you made a related joke. Content warning, there's a gun. Oh no! <laughs> Just like my flag. <laughs> no, it's very good. It's very good, Cheryl. Again, I, I super dig your art style for all the characters. And Chrono Wizard! Dropping in some doodles I made based on the last stream. The left left side is a whole bit, right side is separate bits. Have you tried being less suspicious? Maybe less Eastern? <laughs> they put on cowboy outfits. It's incredible. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Less Eastern and less Southern. No, Ooh. no, no. Ooh. <laughs> they look perfect in their cowboy outfits. No, no. <laughs> The, uh, Barry Caden with his little, uh, handcuff biscuits. Ah, uh, it's lunch. When I ate with me. That's adorable! <laughs> the, oh, it's, it's the, it's the bleb, uh... Oh, the bleb, the, the bleb yeah, cop. The, yeah, bleb cop. And Hatsune Miku, uh, Sholmes is very, very good. <laughs> and... 
<laughs> Soseki, uh, Soseki Katsume. Uh, oh, yeah. Spider-Man. Because <laughs> we, we, we heard you say orphan instead of author. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen, that was his canon event, but I misspoke, and now he's orphan. 